over to another here performing her third solo single and filling us in on all the gossip from the Girls Aloud camp. It's Nicola Roberts. <laughs> Scousers. Nicola, have you, have you ever had a trip to the cavern? I actually haven't. <gasps> yeah. She's not a proper scouser, is she, Ringo? No, she's not a proper scouser. <laughs> but now you can't go to the cavern because it's uh, the old cavern they knocked down and they built another one next ah. door, so it's not really real anymore. Have you, been to the, have you been to the replica one, Ringo? Uh, I have, actually, on a sign the wall. Ah. <laughs> well, you see, Nicola, you've got, you got a little date set up. You need I to know. sort we her out. Should go. We should Absolutely. go. Absolutely. I'm going to take her after the show. Good. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Now, imagine it's time for a break. Join us in at three when we are going to be joined by Live Bird, Nicola Roberts and the man himself, Ringo Starr. <laughs> Whilst our first guest may have taken a hiatus from being one-fifth of the biggest pop band in the country, she certainly hasn't been putting her feet up. Instead, this fully-fledged, flame-haired beauty has been carving out a very successful solo career. Please welcome Nicola Roberts. <laughs> Hello, welcome Hi. to the show. Thank you. Now, what was that face for? You went, hmm. Do you not like being called a flamehead beauty? I always, I don't know, like those introductions, it always is a bit like, oh, cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like someone else. A little bit, yeah. It's just like, I don't know, it's awkward. It's like, what are you supposed to do? Like, yes, yeah. hi, it's me. <laughs> yeah, no, just... but you have been busy and you have been successful. You're doing very well. Yeah. How, how, how is the solo career going? It's good. It's really good. I'm really enjoying myself. It was funny, I was just chatting to. Ringo in there, we were swapping stories. I was like, is this really happening? <laughs> I should do. Yeah, um, but now I'm really enjoying myself. Um, the record's out there. And it's just, it's kind of like a new adventure. Yeah. And I'm really proud of the album and just really being able to create something like that and have total ownership over something is just it, amazing feeling. It has such a unique sound. Is that because it's, it's all from you? Or how, how did it all come about? Um, well, I knew that I wanted to, the sounds to be electro music, but it took me a long time to actually really sort of home in on the sound of the record. Yeah. And that was only because I'm into so much, so many different things, is that it took me such a long time to actually have a direction with it. And mm -hmm. I suppose that's the reason why it took 18 months to write. But I don't know, I like different things. I like sort of pushing the boundaries and, I didn't want a record that sounded like everybody else's. And it's hard to find your own thing, though, because yeah, you, I mean, you've all, all you girls have done your solo thing. Mm. So, well, let, let's have a little listen to your first single. This, this is "Beat of My Drum." Let's have a listen. Incredible. Is that? Do you have someone that does that for you, or how? Do, or do you do that yourself? Um, I work with a lady. So her name's Alison Elwin. She's an, an amazing, amazing person, amazing stylist. And for things like TVs and stuff, we work together. And just really, again, like I'm always about like what's new and what what's kind of fresh. And I get bored so easy. Like I'm kind of all about like trying something new and different and pushing the boundaries. And she really champions that. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like fittings are incredible because we're just mm. like. Oh, oh, oh. Can you imagine if someone brought that to you in a fitting, that yellow and black, yeah. big, those big knickers. That swimsuit She's, thing. Yeah. Now oh, you're in sorry, a band by yourself. Today. Is mm. it, it? It must feel so different to being in a group with other people where you all had to work together. So do you feel it's your choice? You can run it. It feels. <sighs> We were always really in control of everything that we did. So whatever we wore, what song it was that was being released, everything was totally, you know, what we wanted. And it's exactly the same, but just one instead of five. Yeah. But I you don't have to like... listen to their points of view, though. No, but I think when you're in a team, you work as a team, and that's the beauty of being in a band. Yeah. Like, 
you know, one person will say, oh, well, I, I wasn't quite sure about that. And then it's kind of like a debate and that's what's exciting about the band and the kind of strong unity of the five of us. And that's what's exciting and about being in a band. And you've got support, haven't you, when you've got yes. other people, when you're on your own. But the girls must be very supportive yeah, of this are. solo career of yours, because I'm sure they are. But um, will they be reuniting at any time? Will you all get together again at some point? Well, it is our 10th birthday this year. Yes. And it's years. amazing. How's that happened? Wow. So I what will you do? What will you do? Yeah, yeah. What will you do to actually celebrate that? Do you think? I'm not quite sure. I can't quite say, but we definitely will be celebrating. It's so funny because this is obviously the same studio as what we recorded Pop yeah, Stars Arrivals yeah. in. Yeah. And in the green room, you know, you have the gallery there. Yeah. And I said on the way through, the door was open to the gallery, and I said every Saturday night when it was obviously Pop Stars Arrivals, we used to try and spy through the door of the gallery to see <laughs> whose, like, boots was up oh. and whose was down. And so this, this building really does hold yeah. a lot of do, do really you watch, special... Do, do you still keep an eye on what's happening with, you know, X Factor and Britain's Got Talent and that sort I'm of a, thing? How can you not? Like, I'm a sucker for TV, anything that's on, and I'm yeah. watching it. Is it. Has it been everything you hoped it would be when you won that competition to where you are today? Sitting Having... in a green room with Ringo Starr yeah. talking yeah. about music. Yeah. Why is that? <laughs> um, to be honest, I was so young that I didn't imagine it to be anything. I just wanted to be a singer. How old were you? Just I was 16 throughout the auditions. Oh, so, Nicola, you, you said also that after two, was it 2009, you felt that you knew who you were, that it took yeah. all that time. I know it did take a long time, but I think... I don't know, you sort of well, you were just in a, a bubble baby, and you work honest. so constantly and and then all of a sudden it kind of calms down and it's like, whew, you know. So what, what, take a what would you there. like to do now? What would, would you like to do anything else other from singing? Singing and writing is absolutely where I'm happiest and I'm, I'm actually probably the happiest when I'm at the studio and I'm being able to just create like right. just be able to do that and it, you know it somehow be called a job is just <laughs> crazy <laughs> like, that's what you love to do every day and that is where i'm most happy so always constantly trying to be better yeah. as a writer well you're going to be performing your latest single for us at the yes, end of yeah. the show which we can't wait um lovely to see you nicola Thanks. nicola roberts <laughs>